Top 5 Greatest Circus Performers Number 5. Middlebush Giant Billed as the world's tallest man, Arthur James Cayley, a.k.a. the Middlebush Giant, was given the stage name of Colonel Ralph Goshen by P.T. Barnum. Stories about him abounded, Barnum either discovered him while traveling abroad, or first saw him on the streets of New York. He was either born on the Isle of Man, in 1827, or in Jerusalem in 1837. Barnum made up so many stories about the big guy that he himself might not have remembered which one was true. At any rate, the circus billed the Middlebush giant as standing 7 feet 11 inches and weighing 620 pounds, but he most likely topped no more than 7 feet 5 inches, around the same height as today's tallest pro basketball players. Colonel Ralph Goshen died in Middlebush, New Jersey, in 1889 and is buried there. Number 4. Mabel Stark She may have been small in stature, standing just five feet tall, but the marvelous Mabel Stark stood above the crowd as the greatest female tiger trainer in history. For a time, in the early 1920s, her act was the most popular of all six of Ringling's world animal acts. In 1928, after she slipped in a muddy arena, two tigers knocked her to the ground and attacked her clawing at her shoulders, arms and chest, and tearing muscles in her back, thigh and hip, her injuries required 378 stitches, but in just a few weeks, she was back in the steel cages, swathed in bandages and walking with a cane. In 1950, Mabel was attacked so brutally by one of her tigers that it took 175 stitches to save her right arm. The incident didn't stop fearless Mabel, though, she spent 57 years in the limelight, and died of a self-administered drug overdose after being fired from her last job, at a theme park called Jungle Land. Number 3. Mario Zaccini Wanted, man who wishes to be explosively propelled 90 miles an hour out of a cannon across a circus tent into a net. Mario Zaccini apparently thought that sounded like a good job because, after committing to the feat, he and four of his brothers spent years being launched from a silver-painted cannon, three times a day with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. The Zaccinis have acknowledged that their shattering cannon blasts were purely sound effects, achieved by igniting half a cup of black gunpowder, but Mario and his family never revealed the secret of the launching mechanism. Mario often said that flying isn't the hard part, landing in the net is. Number 2. Harry Houdini One of the world's greatest magicians got his start with the Welsh Brothers Circus in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in 1895. For 26 weeks, Harry Houdini and his wife, Beatrice, sang, danced and performed a trick called Metamorphosis, in which they switched places in a locked trunk. Houdini continued to hone his voice and showmanship while becoming an expert at handcuff manipulation. The rest is history, his expertise in escapism launched him into international stardom far away from the circus world. Number 1. Flying Wallendas In 1922, Carl Wallenda formed a foursome called the Great Wallendas. They toured Europe, performing daredevil acts like forming a four-man pyramid and cycling across a tightrope high above the crowd. John Ringling was so impressed with a performance he saw in Cube, that he hired them to perform for the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. They debuted at Madison Square Garden, in 1928, and performed without a net because it had been lost in transit. The act was a crowd pleaser, but it wasn't always fallproof. At an Akron, Ohio performance, the group fell from the high wire to the ground, but they were unhurt. A reporter witnessed the accident and said, The Wallandas fell so gracefully that it seemed as if they were flying, and that's how the great Wallandas became the flying Wallandas. Forty odd years later, on March 22, 1978, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Wallanda fell to his death from the high wire at the age of 73.